YouTube, what is going on? The squat is one of the biggest bang for buck movements you can stick in your programming. So today what I'd like to do is take you through five super easy steps that you can implement into your squatting routine to make sure that you're doing everything you can to be on the way to a bigger, stronger squat. Let's get stuck into it. First things first, I'm gonna do today in my Nike Romalios. If you guys haven't ever used or own a pair of Olympic lifting shoes, I highly recommend them. Not only do they have a super flat sole, which just basically means you are essentially gonna be squatting in concrete, it's super stable. They also have a slightly raised heel, which basically means you don't need to have the calf mobility of the gods to actually get a reasonable range of motion. So if you haven't got them, go get some, particularly if you plan on moving a considerable amount of weight when you squat. Okay, so first things first, let's talk about setup. The best thing you can possibly do when squatting is to try and create really good habits for yourself. That way the only training variable that's gonna change from time to time is the amount of weight you're lifting. The way that you set up, the way that you unrack, the way that you prepare for each rep is exactly the same. Really, really important for when you're doing things like testing a one rep max, all you're doing then basically is lifting a lot more weight. You don't have to worry about the intricacies of the lift in order to actually hit that rep. So, to start off with, hands, as for personal preference really, figure out the appropriate distance on the bar that you feel most comfortable and stick with that. Stay consistent, as again, as I said, we want to create really good habits. So whatever it is you choose to do, stay consistent with that. For me, I like to go a little bit wider than most, but in saying that, you might find you can get far more back activation and stay a lot tighter with a narrower stance. Now keep in mind too guys, these sorts of recommendations for the squat apply to basically all squats. High bar squat, low bar squats, and just about any squatting accessory movement. So just because I'm talking uh, and demonstrating using a low bar squat today doesn't mean you can't apply these principles to the other squats that you might do in your programming as well. So once we've got that uh, distance apart, once we've got our hand positioning on point, ducking under the bar. From here, there is only one way to get the bar out of the rack, and that is to squat it. Right up. All we want to make sure that we're doing is spending as little energy as possible actually getting into that position where we're going to start to think about squatting. We don't want to be burning extra calories by making things harder for ourselves by doing some ridiculous split foot stance. We're making it any harder than it needs to be. We want to make sure that we're loading our spine as optimally as possible and taking as much pressure off our back as we possibly can. So always start by getting underneath the bar and actually squatting it out of the rack. The squat is a power movement. It's a strength movement. We're looking at moving large amounts of weight. We want to put ourselves in a position that is going to enable us to do that as efficiently and as optimally as possible. So, once we're jumping under the bar, what we want to think about doing, even before we unrack it, is to pull that bar down onto our back or onto our traps, wherever that position is, as hard as we possibly can. Think about doing a lat pull down, a wide grip lat pull down behind your head and really trying to bend that bar over your back. What that's automatically going to do is engage your lats and ensure that your back remains active throughout the lift. Jumping under the bar, getting our feet into position, and from here we're pulling the bar down onto our back. And then we're squatting out of the rack. While we're squatting, through each rep, we want to make sure that that tension throughout our back remains active. So you're pulling that bar down onto your back for the duration of the rep. You might be able to take a rest between each rep, but whilst you're actively squatting, you want to make sure that you're pulling that bar down as hard as you possibly can be. A lot of people when they squat, don't allow their back to remain active throughout the movement, but it's really important when it comes to dictating depth. A lot of people think you have to squat ass to grass. I tend to agree, but with 
a side clause essentially. So you want to squat down as low as you possibly can, but you want to squat as low as you can in a safe manner. So staying tight and ensuring your back remains active is actually going to allow you to dictate that depth far better than the alternative. If you aren't pulling the bar down on the back, you have plenty of opportunities to go super, super low, but a lot of people tend to experience that their hips tuck under at the bottom. The dreaded butt wink happens very frequently, particularly in commercial gyms. So by pulling that bar down onto your back, you're gonna make sure that you are not going too low and also staying in a really strong position. So if we jump from the side on angle here, by pulling the bar down hard onto our back, you can see as we descend, we can only go so low. The moment my back relaxes, I can go lower, but you can see the angle of my lower back starts to bend, which means all of the force on my back is being directly translated straight through my lower back, putting me in a very inefficient position to actually squat, as well as an unsafe one. So, pulling that bar down hard onto our back, we can only go so low before coming back up. Okay, next thing we're gonna talk about is breathing. Breathing is probably the most important aspect of the entire squat. You look at all the strongest guys in the world, the most successful power lifters, none of them are actively breathing throughout the lift. When we first get into resistance training, typically we're taught to breathe in on the way down and breathe out on the way up, which is a great way to approach things if you are new to lifting weights. But if you wanna move a lot of weight, we're gonna look at enhancing that process just a little bit more. So, before we squat, what we're gonna do is look at breathing in to prepare, holding our breath throughout the entire movement, and then resetting and breathing again for the next rep. What we wanna be looking at doing is breathing in as much air as possible and bracing our core. Think about if somebody is about to punch you right in the stomach, you wanna make sure that you're taking a huge deep breath in and then preparing for that impact, as if someone is really going to hit you hard in the stomach. From there, we're still incorporating, pulling that bar down onto our back, but we're keeping that air in our core as tight and as hard as we possibly can. The best way to think about this is to imagine that you're squatting on an air mattress. First, on one that is only half filled with air. Think about how unstable you'd be doing that. Then compare that to squatting on an air mattress that is rock solid because it is so full of air. The difference is going to be extreme. On one hand, you're gonna have a super stable squat, and on the other, not so much. Now, imagine that your body is actually that air mattress. You wanna be as stable and as strong and as tight as possible, so fill your diaphragm with as much air as you possibly can before adopting that brace position. Jumping under, getting our feet in line, we're pulling that bar down hard onto our back. Big breath in to unwrap. Stepping back into position. So again, we're pulling the bar down hard onto our back. Big breath in. Still pulling down. Okay, so the last thing we're gonna talk about today is getting up and under the bar once we hit the bottom of the squat. So we wanna make sure that we're staying as tight as we possibly can. We're obviously controlling the descent as much as we can for explosively trying to get out of the hole. What we wanna think about doing is getting our chest sort of up and underneath the bar to make sure that everything is moving in an upwards direction from the bottom of the squat. Big breath in. all the way down. And when we hit the bottom of the squat, we want to think about driving up with our chest and even our head with our elbows coming just underneath as well. We want to try and make sure that as we're coming back up, everything else is ducking underneath the bar and helping us to push in an upwards direction. And the last thing we're going to talk about today is what we're going to do when we hit the bottom of the squat most important thing that we want to make sure that we're doing is staying tight throughout the lift. So we want to try and make sure that as we hit the bottom, as we hit that hole, we want to try and think about coming back up. We're staying super tight, 
getting our chest up and under the bar. We wanna make sure that we're almost bringing our chest in an upright direction to make sure that our back is staying super tight so we can actually translate force through our legs and complete the rep. Now from here, if you're doing a high bar squat, you're gonna be breaking first from the knees. It's a more upright position. When we're low bar squatting, however, we're breaking first from the hips. We wanna try and make sure that we're engaging our posterior chain as much as possible. So for me, I'm doing a low bar squat, we're gonna be breaking from the hips first. Big breath in. Coming down. From here, we wanna be thinking about everything coming back up. We can throw the head back a little bit, get that chest up underneath, and if it helps, driving those elbows underneath the bar to make sure that everything is coming up and our back is staying as tight as possible so that our legs can actually do the work that we're trying to get them to do. Big breath in. Staying tight is super, super important. It's gonna make sure that we can actually get our legs to do the work that we're trying to get them to do. If our back gives out at any stage or it becomes too weak to actually handle active tension, chances are all of that pressure, all of that weight on your back is gonna run straight through the weakest point. And that's gonna be wherever that bend is in your back. So you need to make sure that you're doing whatever it is you can to stay tight. You now have everything you need to go and develop a world-class squat. Think about making things as efficient as possible, using as little energy as you possibly can to put yourself into a strong position to move as much weight as you can, or as, as much weight as you can handle at the very least. Start from the bottom and work your way up. Training yourself to become accustomed to building good habits and further developing those over time and progressively overloading whilst doing so is the secret to building a really, really big squat. Each time you get into the rack to squat is an opportunity to refine your skill. So give yourself every chance of doing that each time you jump into the squat rack. The more you can do something, the, the more you can practice, the better at it you're gonna become. Think about squatting that bar out of, the, out of the rack, pulling it down super hard onto your back, a big deep breath before you descend into the squat and staying as tight, as tight as you possibly can. Make sure your lats and your entire posterior chain are engaged for a low bar squat and give yourself every chance of ducking up and under that bar at the bottom before getting stuck into your next rep. Give it a go guys, if you have any questions, please make sure you put them in the comment section below and I will get back to you. Obviously, if you want any more information on heavy lifting, strength training, DUP, all of those details are in the description section. Until next time guys, see you then.